coalition is comprised of dozens of diverse entities and individuals, all of whom believe, like those great presidents we talked about, in freedom. Freedom for businesses and individuals as the means to renewed prosperity. Our coalition does and will soon include think tanks like our center to put out information and research, citizen, taxpayer, and youth groups. Youth are very important to this. Constitutional legal entities, investigative journalists, and other media allies candidate recruiting and training organizations, opposition research, and concerned citizens just like you. So let me ask you, what can you dare to imagine that Rhode Island would be like in three to five years? Do you even dare? Well, like Abe Lincoln, we're building a team here in Rhode Island and we do plan to start winning some policy battles. I hope you're ready for that, because I can, I can tell you that I am. As a former big league player, I'm one competitive son of a gun. And I don't like losing. And I, along with many, many others, do not accept that Rhode Island is doomed to be a perennial last place team. I don't accept it, do you? No. We aim to do something about it. So this is what we're doing. This is one of the missions now of our center and all the think tanks like ours throughout the country not just to inject research like think tanks used to do, create white papers and put them into the public debate that 10 people would read. We're out there actively spreading the word of freedom, the free market principles that can rebuild our state and our country, and to build a winning statewide team following that proven Wisconsin model here in Rhode Island. So like Lincoln, like Washington, like Reagan, we and our coalition are once again fighting for freedom in Rhode Island and across America, like Colonel West is. Freedom from tyrannical leaders, and it is. It is nothing short of tyranny, what's going on right now. Freedom from communist-type public policy. Again, it's, that's what it is. We've got to tell it like it is. Freedom from political correctness and the soft bigotry of low expectations. In my humble opinion, these are battles we must win. So if I may, one last story about Abraham Lincoln that kind of ties everything I think together. Not only was Lincoln a baseball fan, but he actually built a little baseball field at the White House. Did you know that? They called it the White Lot. They constructed it at the White House for ball games. And a Lincoln could often be seen playing baseball with, with kids who were taking up the sport back in those days. Well, one day, President Lincoln gets to the field a little bit late and the game's already begun. So he goes and stands over on the third base, near the third base bag in foul territory, watches the game for a few minutes, and this one team at bat just keeps hit after hit after hit, run after run, bases are loaded, the guy whacks it over the left fielder's head, the base is clearing triple, the ball gets thrown in back into the infield, into the third baseman, third baseman takes it, pounds it in his glove, pounds it in his glove, walks up to the pitcher, here, Joe, come on, get this next guy. You can do it. Come on, we can go, we can go. And he walks back to his bag at third base over near President Lincoln. And the president looks at the young boy and says, well, you guys have been in the field a long time. They've been scoring runs. What's the score? He goes, like, 17 to nothing. But you're so happy. You're so upbeat. Where do you get your energy from? He goes, President Lincoln, it's only the top of the first, and we haven't had our turn at bat yet. <laughs> well, you know what? It is a new day, and it is our turn now. The other team has scored the equivalent of 17 runs. But you know what? It is the top of the first, and we haven't our turn, had our turn at bat yet. Time for us to start whacking that ball around and hitting a few home runs. Our day is coming, and you can count on it. We. Can, If we can learn to come together as a team, like they did in Wisconsin and Michigan, and like we're going to do here, it is a whole new ball game. It's a newly formed team with a brand new winning strategy. So I thank you for what you do as advocates in your local communities and across the state. And I ask you to consider the greater statewide good and the coalition team that we are building here in Rhode Island. Now, Jim. McGuire and Sharon Gamba can give you more details. They're, they're well aware of what's going on and, and they're key leaders in this movement.
But now is not the time for you to remain silent or to work separately from critical state issues. We need you. And in conclusion, I'd just like to share with you a few long-term visions I have for Rhode Island and for myself, if I may. First, again, picture Interstate 95. And imagine headlights coming into our state. Headlights of shoppers, people returning, businesses wanting to start, instead of the taillights we're so used to seeing leaving our state. That's my vision, that's our goal for our state. And next, I dream of myself 30 years from now, sitting on my front porch with Wendy and in my rocking chair and thinking back on the good we collectively have done for the state and for the people of Rhode Island. In the spirit of Lincoln, I hope you'll support our new team and I hope you'll join me on that porch. And lastly, my most immediate vision is anticipation of what Colonel West is about to tell us. <laughs> and he'll tell us what's going on at the national level. I just can't wait to listen. Uh, God bless you. God bless our state. God bless America. Thank you for allowing me to come.